rotational inertia. This uh, video will deal with point objects, and the next video will make it a little more complex. We'll put in a solid object. So right now we've got three masses, M1, M2, and M3. They are attached to a massless rod, and the whole rod is rotating about the x-axis. So finding the rotational inertia of this system is not much different than finding the inertia, sort of the regular inertia, of a system of objects. Let's say you're pulling a wagon. You want to know the mass of the wagon. Mass is how we measure inertia, right? And that tells us the change, uh, how an object resists changes in motion. You just add up the mass of each thing in the wagon, and it tells you the mass of the wagon with all the contents. And we're going to do the same thing here. The rotational inertia of the system, I, is equal to the rotational inertia of each of its components. Now the rod is massless, so it has no rotational inertia. So we'll just add up the rotational inertias of each of the individual point objects. And for a point object, it's m r squared, where r is the distance from the object to the axis of rotation. So there's our equation. And let's go ahead and plug in some numbers. We're given the masses are 1, 2, and 3 kilograms. So our 1 kilogram mass is a distance of 1 meter away from the axis of rotation. The 2 kilogram mass is uh, 2 meters away from the axis of rotation. And the 3 kilogram mass is 3 meters away. How convenient. So we get 1 plus 8 plus 27, which is 36 kilogram meters squared. So there's our moment of inertia of this system rotating about the x-axis. Let's take a look at what happens when it rotates about the y-axis. There's our massless rod. That's M3. That's M1. That's M2. And this time, it's rotating about the y-axis. So sort of like holding a pencil in your fingers and just rotating it back, you know, rubbing your fingers back and forth. And the, uh, the pencil spinning about an axis uh, along the length of the pencil. So here we've got the same, we're going to start off the same way. The moment of inertia is the sum of all the individual rotational inertias. And, you know, in physics we use the term moment of inertia and rotational inertia interchangeably. So uh, sometimes I call it moment of inertia, sometimes rotational inertia. That's, uh, that's the way it is. Let's plug in our equation here, m1 r1 squared plus m2 r2 squared plus m3 r3 squared. And how far are these masses located from the axis of rotation? Well, they're on the axis of rotation. So they're, they're located zero distance, right? They're, they're right on the axis of rotation. So they are contributing nothing to the rotational inertia. In other words, when you try to spin this object along the, uh, the length, an axis of rotation that goes through the length of the object, it doesn't resist changes in motion. It doesn't take anything to get it spinning. It doesn't take anything to stop it from spinning. It doesn't resist changes in rotation along that axis. But the same object rotating about the x-axis and it's a very different story, right? The mass is located further from the axis of rotation. It's harder to get it rotating if it's not rotating and once it is rotating it's harder to stop it. So the same 
object rotating about different axes of rotation has a uh, have uh, different moments of inertia, different rotational inertias. So rotational inertia not only depends on the object, it depends on what the axis of rotation is.